in a world filled with people having supernatural ability. Nano Nakajima feels like a misfit as he attends an exclusive school for talented individuals on a remote island to train for an upcoming battle against the enemies of humanity. Despite trying to keep it to himself, Nano is constantly bullied by his classmates, Maguo and Seiya. One day, two new transfer students, Kaiwuya and Nana, join their class. While Kaiwuya takes up a mysterious personality, Nana immediately happily tells everyone that she can read minds and takes her seat next to Nano. After class, as Nana starts to bug Nano and ask about his abilities, the homeroom teacher announces the elections for the class rep. While the powerful students start to bicker, Nana nominates Nano, saying that she can read his mind and that he's the best fit for the role. Much to Nano's distaste, the students agree to decide the winner by a duel. After school, Nana follows Nano and forces him to give her a tour of the island and spends the entire day with him, slowly getting closer. As Nana returns Nano's forgotten wristwatch, Nano starts to question himself as to why he's working so hard for his father's approval. The next day, Nano decides to participate in the fight as Maguo and Seiya go all out, trying to take each other down. Noting that Nana is about to get engulfed in the aftermath, Nano swiftly steps in front of her to neutralize the imminent attack. Seeing that he has an amazing talent, the class decides to nominate Nano as their leader. That evening, as Nano and Nana hold hands near a cliff, Nana suddenly pushes him off the cliff, telling Nano that she has no mind-reading abilities and that it was all a ploy to kill him since he's the real enemy of humanity. The next day, Maguo asks Nana about Nana whereabouts to which she tells him that she has no idea and that he might be sick. During PE, as her classmate Yaohei nearly falls into the river, Nana watches in disgust as Seiya effortlessly freezes the entire river solid. During class, Nana watches in horror as Yaohei goes back into the past and stops Maguo from acting out. Fearing that he might find out about Nana, Nana decides to dispose of him quickly. After school, she tries to get close to him and learn about his talent. But Kaiouya interrupts them and asks Yaohei to investigate Nano's disappearance which he agrees to do. Nana, fearing that he might catch on, tags along with him as he jumps back into the past to confirm her story of being with Nano yesterday, learning that he gets tired the more backward in time he travels. Yaohei, being tired, decides to try again tomorrow. That night, Nana rushes over to the frozen lake and covers it with dirt, bringing Yaohei with her in the dead of the night. She tells him that Nano got eaten by an enemy of humanity here. Yaohei, seeing that Nana is crying, instantly goes back in time, not realizing that he's going to drown in the past. Seeing that Kaiouya might be onto her, Nana decides to get rid of him as quickly as possible. She tries to eat lunch with him, but Kaiouya declines her offer. Following him, she notices that he's feeding a cat some milk in a storage room. The next day, Kaiouya surprisingly invites her to his room. Nana, grabbing the opportunity, enters his room and is surprised when she learns that he's an otaku. Kaiouya puts on a game and gives her a controller which confuses her even more. As she's about to leave, he shows her Nanao's wristwatch and leads her to the cliff where he starts to interrogate her. Nana, realizing that he's dangerous, quickly stirs up a lie and tells him that an enemy of humanity might have killed him. The next day, Nana goes through Kaiouya's file but finds inconclusive information. Setting up a trap for him in the shed, Nana watches from a distance as Kaiouya enters the shed to heat some milk for the cat. Not realizing that the stove is still on, the shed explodes as he ignites the fire. Nana rushes forward to see what his talent is but finds him burning. As she runs to grab some water, Kaiouya grabs her by the ankle, asking what she's doing here. Eventually, Kaiouya reveals his ability and how he is invincible. As everyone gathers around Kaiouya asking about the fire, Karara and Kaori enter the class and tell everyone about the love letter Mikairu got. Seeing that Nana has scraped her leg, Mikairu licks it and it starts to heal, creeping Nana out. Knowing that it's a prank, Nana tells Mikairu after school about the truth which makes her sad, but she instantly becomes her friend. Nana then looks at her profile and notices that she has a kill count of over 150,000 people. After having lunch with her, Nana decides to leave Mikairu for the end. Knowing that she needs to throw Kaiouya off, she sets up the stage and gets elected as the class rep the very next day. With the students on her side, she can easily turn to them if Kaiouya gets too close to her. As she sends Mikairu off to collect information about the students, Nana prepares some poison needles to kill him. However, she gets approached by Tsunakichi, who asks why she is going to kill him and shows her a picture throwing Nano off the cliff. Tsunakichi shows her a picture of her dying on the floor in the PE shed at 10pm, telling her that the future is inevitable. Knowing that he wants to blackmail her, Nana asks what he wants, and he tells her that he wants her to be his girlfriend. Later that night, as she massages him in his room, Nana tries to get more information out of him. As he's finally asleep, Nana patiently waits as his camera prints the photos out, seeing that there is one that shows him dying instead. Nana quickly hides the picture and makes up another one to throw him off track. 
The next day, as he takes a bath, she quickly changes the time on his watch as well. Noticing that one picture is missing, he quickly frisks her and finds the fake picture of her being strangled. Afterward, she invites him to the shed to confirm the accuracy of his prediction. That night as she hides in the shed, Nana accidentally ends up dropping her needles. Sunakichi suddenly walks in and sits down. She pounces on him but Sunakichi easily overpowers her, telling her that he knew about the watch. Noticing that her hand is near her needles, Nana sneakily pierces Tsunakechi, poisoning him. Right at that moment, Kaiouya and Mikairu walk in. Seeing herself cornered, Nana quickly lies that he was blackmailing her and he suddenly collapsed. As she quickly runs off to collect the pictures from his room, Nana realizes that she has left one behind. As she made her way back to the shed, Nana couldn't help but observe Mikairu deeply engrossed in a picture of her tossing Nano off a cliff while attempting to mend Tsunakich's injuries. Nana readies herself to kill Mikairu but drops it when she returns the photo asking what it is. Nana plays ignorant and suggests Tsunakich's talent may have waned over time. Mikairu then promises to keep the photo a secret. At Tsunakich's funeral, Kaiouya questions the absence of police involvement due to the island's isolation. Mikairu proposes that she can try and resurrect him which throws Nana into a bind. But she quickly tells her that she might die from it. Kaiouya starts raising suspicions, but Nana stops him from examining the body. Suddenly, Shinji, a necromancer, raises Tsunakichi from the dead, telling them that they can just ask him directly. Nana, making up a lie, tells him that she can hear Tsunakichi crying in pain, making him stop. The next day, Nana seeks information about Shinji and his girlfriend, Yuka. As she spies on them, she suddenly runs into Kaiwuya. They both approach Yuka and Shinji, and Yuka explains Shinji's necromancer talent and Yuka's goal to change people's perception of necromancers. During P, Nana feigns exhaustion and uses the opportunity to sneak into the boy's dorm to prick Shinji with her needle. That night, Nana attempts to assassinate Yuuka but fails when Shinji pins her down. Looking up at Yuuka, Nana realizes that she's the actual necromancer and Shinji is nothing but a corpse. Seeing that she's trapped, Nana proposes a truce and tells what Shinji is thinking since she can hear the thoughts of the dead as well. Yuuka agrees to let her go and Nana dashes out of the room. Yuuka and Shinji then pursue Nana. Meanwhile, Nana manages to outrun them for a while and hides in the bushes, realizing that she needs some sort of item from the dead to resurrect them. Nana tries to grab Yuuka's necklace, but she manages to dodge her attack. Nana continues to evade her pursuers and eventually hides in an old cottage. She sets up a trap, barricading herself inside until sunrise, proving her theory that Yuuka can only use her powers at night. Yuuka, however, simply locks her inside and leaves, telling her that she'll come back at night. That night, Yuuka, Shinji, and reanimated corpses surround the cottage. They inspect it but find Nana has escaped. Despite a night-long search with zombies, they fail to locate her. Nana ambushes Yuuka by the girl's dorm and steals the catalyst for Yuuka's abilities, a relic from the deceased. Leading her to a cliffside, she scares Yuuka by attempting to throw her relic away, making her confess that she killed Shinji when he went out with another girl. Seeing that she has her guard down, Nana pricks her with needle, killing her. After disposing of Yuuka's corpse, Nana walks through the forest, contemplating her next steps with the open corpses now present. She then encounters Karara hunting snakes for food and learns about her ability to create poison. Nana then questions Karara's missing partner, Kaori, to which she tells her that they have been fighting since she took her contact. Seizing the opportunity, Nana restrains Karara and demands her phone password before ultimately killing her. She proceeds to Kaori's room and poisons her contacts to frame Karara for the murder, hoping to divert suspicion. Kaiouya confronts Nana about the disappearance of Yuuka and Shinji. Tearfully, Nana confesses to Yuuka's death, leading Kaiouya, Mikairu, Seiya, and Maguo to the scene. She explains the situation and Maguo incinerates Shinji's body. Kaiouya agrees to monitor Nana closely from this point. Later, they locate and incinerate the scattered corpses in the forest. Nana claims to hear the enemy of humanity's voices in the girl's dorm, leading the group to investigate. Eventually, they discover Kaori's corpse in her room. Kaiouya ingests a liquid from her contact container, identifying it as poison. Kaiouya suspects Nana as the culprit, though Mikairu defends her. However, Kaiouya remains convinced of Nana's guilt and plans to find Karara in the morning. In Kaori's room, Kaiouya questions Nana about her connection to the two girls. Mikairu points out text messages on Kaori's phone, leading to a debate between Kaiouya and Nana. 
Despite Nana's efforts to refute the evidence and her mind-reading talent, Kaiowuya's accusations persist. Getting closer, he starts to search her for the phone. Upon searching, Kaiowuya couldn't find anything on her despite being quite confident about the evidence. Nana thanks her stars as her gamble of burning the phone with the corpses actually worked. At night, Mikairu joins Nana on guard duty. Suddenly, Mikairu holds a box cutter knife to Nana's neck, questioning why she didn't use her mind-reading talent to detect her intention. Noticing the other students approach, Mikairu reverts to her sweet persona and leaves. The next day at school, Mikairu offers Nana a small gift, claiming it's for the class rep. Nana declines, but Mikairu accepts her refusal, intending to catch Nana off guard to expose her true talent. Nana opens the gift in front of the class but gets the contents wrong. As she reveals its contents, a note emerges bearing the words, I love Nana-san, which Kaiuya points out as being attached to Mikairu's back. Kaiuya calmly dismisses the incident, having learned from his past blunders. By the cliffside, Nana confronts Mikairu, asking where the real Mikairu is. A man, Jin Takabana, suddenly appears and introduces himself. Jin proposes a deal and takes Nana to an undisclosed location, assuring her that the real Mikairu is unharmed. Jin discloses how he won a battle royale that took place here and how he learned that the talentless are killing the talented, telling her that he buried his classmates which Yuka resurrected. Nana poisons Jin's coffee, seemingly gaining the upper hand, but then is cornered by classmates who turn out to be Jin's illusions as he snatches her phone. Jin reveals his talent to copy appearances and abilities, making Nana realize that he's the true enemy of humanity. With Nana's cell phone in his possession, Jin interrogates Nana about her contact, but she manages to run away. However, Jin uses Maguo's fire talent against her, nearly killing her. He then admits he's still learning to fully control the talents he copies. Asking about her past, Nana tells him how her parents died which led to her current job. Before Nana passes out, Jin advises her to be cautious as she's not the only killer here. Nana wakes up in Mikairu's room, who had been taking care of her. Seeing how thoughtful she is, Nana tells her about her past. After the funeral of their recently deceased classmates, Jin visits Nana in her room, expressing his happiness at her recovery. He tries to negotiate a deal with her using her phone as leverage, but Mikairu suddenly knocks at the door. As Nana goes to answer, Jin quickly turns back into a cat, seeing that they are alone. Mikairu asks her to tell her more about her past, making Nana completely open up about what happened to her parents. The following day, Nana wakes up to find Mikairu sitting on her bed, lost in thought. Kaiyui arrives and leads them to the boys' dorm area, where they discover the dead body of Ryuji Ishihai. Kaiyui carefully examines the facts surrounding Ryuji's death and questions Maguo and his henchmen for their alibi since Maguo's room is next to the victims. Each of them reveals their talents. Sato can mimic voices, Rentaru has astral projection, and Shoichi possesses the power of magnetism. Ryuji's girlfriend, Fuko, also provides her alibi, showing her wind control talent by manipulating the air outside, telling him that she needs ventilation and open space to use it. Meanwhile, Nana and Mikairu revisit the crime scene, and Nana senses Mikairu's unusual behavior. Later, as they share lunch in the cafeteria, Mikairu tells her that she wants to be a doctor and invites her and her parents. Nana, enraged by words, storms off. In Fuko's room, Kaiyuya and Nana interrogate Fuko and her relationship with Ryuji. Later, Nana visits Mikairu's room to see if she's onto her and reads her diary where Mikairu pours her heart out. Suddenly, Jin appears and returns Nana's poison bottle, telling her that it's a shame she suspected Mikairu. Before departing, he informs Nana that Mikairu has been in the shower for a long time. Rushing in, Nana finds Mikairu unconscious in the bathtub, realizing that she's still breathing. Nana quickly gets her out of the bathtub and tries to nurse her back to health. Seeing that her condition is worsening, she rushes to the homeroom teacher, asking if there is a doctor here but he tells her that he's the only faculty left since the others left the island for vacation. With no one else to turn, Nana rushes over to Kaiyuya who's performing an autopsy on Ryuji's body. Telling her that he's busy and will check on her later, he hands her the medicine she asks for. Nana then breaks into the cafeteria to get some food and quickly rushes back to Mikairu. As her fever finally begins to break, Kaiyuya arrives as well. Seeing Nana in distress, his suspicions of her trying to kill Mikairu ease. The next morning, when she finally awakens, Mikairu thanks Nana for taking care of her and apologizes for earlier. Mikairu then tells her about her past and how she lost her friend, Hitomi, to cancer and how this inspired her to become a doctor. Leaving her room, Nana begins to feel conflicted as she has to kill Mikairu to fulfill her mission. Mikairu hurries over to Nana, earnestly reassuring her that she isn't responsible for her own parents' demise and urges her not to place blame on herself. As she embraces her, Nana realizes that she has finally made a friend. 
The next day, Jin tells Nana that someone asked Mikairu to meet him in the middle of the night, realizing that it's the killer who killed Ryuji. She rushes over to Kaiyuya, telling him that she suspects Rentaru since they don't know fully how his astral travel works. As Nana rushes after Mikairu, Kaiyuya sets off to find Rentaru. On her way, she gets a call from her superior, Tatsumi Tsuriwoka, which scares the life out of her. He tells her that the payments for her deeds have been transferred and commends her for her assassinations. Realizing that she's on a mission, Nana begins to wonder if she should save Mikairu. Meanwhile, just as Rentaru is about to stab Mikairu to death, Nana jumps in front of her, taking the blow, creating an opening for Mikairu. Nana yells at her that she only manipulated her, making her run away in tears. Right at that moment, Kaiyuya grabs the real Rentaru by the neck, making him come back to his real body. As Nana begins to drift off, Mikairu runs back to her. Using her powers, she heals her completely, snatching her back from the brink of death. Upon finally waking, Nana notices that Mikairu is already dead. Overwhelmed with grief, she clutches her friend's lifeless body, with tears streaming down her face. If you liked what you saw subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to get notified about our quality uploads.